Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and uh, this is not my usual day for plug-in posting, but I'm not plug-in posting. I have something else. So, uh, hey, you can do this. Now, you see two things there, and one of them you maybe can't do quite yet. Like I said, I have this thing where if my Patreon gets to $2,000 a month, I start making DIY synth stuff, showing people how to do it, and helping people get their hands on that sort of thing. And here's an example. This is a Eurorack frame that you can put uh, modules and things in. And I'm going to be doing Eurorack stuff to work with that kind of thing. So that's pretty exciting. But you can have this. So what is this? I'll show you and I'll tell you. This is a chord slide rule. This is based off of all that stuff I've been doing for ages where I was making circle of fifths calculations and working out how that formulation worked, like you'd be doing stuff like this, and all manner of things I've tried. For instance, I've tried making cards and drawing chords on the various cards with the hope of making a sort of game out of coming up with chord structures. And to do that, you'd have to get or make cards. But if you can print stuff on a piece of paper, then you can make one of these. And it is a chord slide rule. Here's how it works. Firstly, the way that it works is it's a PDF file. And what you're going to do is print it on two pieces of paper, cut them out, and assemble them into one of these. After having done that, and the one where you cut the slots out here, you fold it over and tape it. This other thing you cut to fit so that it will show through the holes. Uh, do that as best you can. Probably doesn't have to be perfect. Having done that, we've got this slot as the key of C major. See, it says Ionian major, major third. And it shows C there. That's uh, the key of C major. It also counts as A minor and a variety of other things as well. All of the chords are being shown on there. For instance, if you wanted to do Mixolydian, you would be choosing G to be working on that. What you get when you make this slide rule is and I'm looking over here because I can see how well the slide rule is showing and I can see what it, it, it says on the camera. The text up here says, note that the Loquian chord slide entries have no fifth. This is the Loquian chord slot. It says a B minor, but if you were to accurately play that chord in this key, you'd need to leave out the fifth because the Locrian mode doesn't include the fifth. It will include a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. There's also a little symbol there that says clockwise new note. And on the Lydian slot, it says counterclockwise new note. Here's what that means. Using this little slide rule, if you were to shift the chord over one slot. You got a new set of chords. Some of them are the same chords as you had before. And there's a couple of new ones. Actually, there's three new ones. And the new note that you added when you went from the key of C to, in major, you would call it the key of G, you added a F sharp. And the new chords use the F sharp in some way. So what you've got here, using this as a slide rule, 
is a way of looking at which chords are adjacent to the key you're in and which chords are in the key that you're in. So you can make music using your A minor, B minor, C, D minor, E minor, F, and G7, G major 7. And those are all going to fit within that key. But you can also throw in a G, and that means you've gone over to a, a key, the adjacent key that has an F sharp in it. You can do the B minor and include the fifth, and that's also the fifth that you get out of that is the F sharp. You can play a D7, and that is, again, adjacent to the key that you're in. And supposing you were to go farther over even than that, you could go to a key of D major, and these are now your chords. You got an A seventh. You've got a D, a D major, rather than a D minor. You've got a D flat minor. You got a B minor, and so on. And again, the B minor is consistent with not being in the key of C anymore because it's got that F sharp in it. Notice that, I'm sorry, I'm distorting. Uh, notice that the new notes you get in this new key come from the same place. In fact, you've just added an F sharp minor. You, you've added an F sharp going this way. What's the next note that you add? The new accidental as you keep moving around the cycle of fifths is in fact D flat. And that takes us here. And these are now the chords that we're using. I've also got some notes on here where, again, it's uh, the Dorian mode. If you were doing, say, D minor and you were trying to make music in Dorian using this key signature, it says minor third, major six, right? Yeah. And the characteristic note of this mode that you need to hit in order to make it um, seem like the Dorian mode is shown in Locrian. Locrian being that slot of this vertical slice here. So in Dorian, you're going to play a D minor, but then if you hit a B natural, this B here, that's going to imply that you're in the Dorian mode rather than just playing minors, just being an Aeolian. And it's like that. The Lydian has an augmented fourth. It it has a fifth, but it also has the uh, diminished fifth in there. Same as augmented fourth, like the satanic interval. And if you are playing that, there's some stuff here saying counterclockwise new note. That means something else. And it's a major chord. But then the characteristic note is B natural. Again, if you're in F, then B natural is the augmented fourth. That shows you you're in Lydian. So some of these things, like the Phrygian mode, for instance, that's a minor third. It says E minor. And the characteristic note from there is going to be a flat ninth. That is shown in Lydian. You go from E minor to F. And that shows you you're in Phrygian. And the F it's shown in Lydian. It's shown in this slot of the slide rule. Same deal with the Mixolydian mode, major seventh, and it is shown in Lydian. Again, it's an F. Seeing some characteristics there? There is some commonality to where these notes keep coming. On this side, we've got some that are shown in the Locrian, and the key note is your B. And in this side, and also um, using the uh, diminished fifth, the new notes are often going to be shown in this Lydian slot or in this Locrian slot. So say you changed key over, included the F sharp, and now we're over here. That is a useful key because it's E minor. 
So a lot of guitar and bass riffing can fit in this. And you can make chords out of this. But then if you wanted to move over one more, same deal. Again, if you were using an interesting mode with the same notes that the riffs belong to, like say you want to do a jam in a Dorian mode, so you're going to be in essentially A minor, but you're going to use the same notes that you would use if you were riffing in E minor. And they'll, they'll sit in the same places on the fretboard of the guitar or bass. And then if you wanted to go, say, to another set of notes, you could go this direction. Or would it be that direction? And counterclockwise new note. In this slot in the Lydian, you see the little uh, lesser than sign pointing in this way. That means you can change the key this way to go to these chords, and the new note that you will add is F, not F sharp, but F. That's how this works. Not only that, you can see that we're in E minor. There's also things like if you wanted to step even farther over, I believe, uh, I'm trying to figure out which one it is. I think it's two over is a very comfortable uh, key for jamming in. At any rate, pick any of these slots. And if you're way over on the edge, it wraps. You can see these are the same on either side. So you can just sort of extrapolate out there. You might not want to twist it around in a circle because this might not stay flat. But if you were trying to make a chord progression and you want it to basically live in a key, you can wander off in these directions. And the farther in this direction you go, the farther to the side you go, the weirder the chord is that you went. And if you're picking chords that um, are wandering in some direction, they're, they're going off funky in some kind of way. You can pick chords in these keys and it'll still basically make sense. It'll make basically chordal sense. Or you can just wander. For instance, C, G, D, A, E is the chords to Hey Joe the famous Jimi Hendrix and uh, a number of other, he, he covered it, there's other people who did it. That uh, chord progression is just moving along the circle of fifths. Now you might ask, why wouldn't you want full access to all of these chords here to think of stuff like that? Supposing you can move in circle of fifths, wouldn't you want to just look at all of this stuff? Well, here's why the slide rule concept is useful. If you went to these chords here, what's hiding under this Dorian next to the D minor? Hey, it's A minor, which was already here. What's hiding under the thing where it says Lydian next to the F? Hey, that's C. C was already here. If we went over or farther, so that what's hiding under there? G, guess what? G's here, and it's shown on the slide rule. What this is showing you is all of the chords that aren't already represented in this vertical slice, which is everything that sits within a key, and leaves out everything that is already there. So you don't actually have to see the stuff that's being obscured by these words, because it's already represented either in the key that you start with, or in the adjacent 
slots that you can see. This just makes it easier to work with. So yeah, you can take any position and wander in either direction if you wanted to go to strange out there chords. And you know, you don't have to stop with just only the uh, three slots that are available because this follows all the way around the circle of fifths. If you wanted to continue outwards, guess what? See where this uh, shows a F sharp minor? There it is. D sharp minor, there that is. So what you would do if you wanted to go to really outlandish and unreasonable chords, you could just keep following these slots past where the uh, piece of paper uh, exposes them. And that would give you very strange, like you'd go A minor, B minor, B major, very big jump there. And if you went to that, then you could throw in some other chords like E major, D flat minor, and those would be living in the uh, sort of far reaches of the chords relative to where you started. So yeah. There you have it. And of course, you can do this with um, guitars and basses and things like that, or you can compose synthesizer music. You can do drum and bass and have your uh, bass lines centered in chords of these types and follow these patterns. In order to make stuff that sounds like you're more of a jazz guy or jazzly and thinking of music theory stuff that like I know I didn't go to school for that. That's probably why I came up with this. This is probably a very strange thing to do, but it seems to work. And uh, yeah, this is not a plugin. There is a plugin coming that is that is much sought after, which is the uh, Macity plugin. That's coming tomorrow. I'm also working on the whole porting things to Mac App M1, and I should be able to get some traction going on that tomorrow and talking with somebody. But for today, this is the Air Windows Chord Concept Slide Rule. And what you're going to do with this is download the PDF file and print it on anything. Print it, cut out the slots, do a little paper crafting, and make your own slide rule to refer to this kind of thing. In so doing, you should be able to make chord sequences that are more enjoyable to you and they're easier to follow if you're playing melodies or soloing or composing things over them. It's been a long journey of going through all those circles of chords and circles of fifths and stuff, but I'm pretty happy with this outcome. I hope to be, when in my copious free time, obviously, doing some more music and uh, having new demo music to go with and all that kind of stuff because that's kind of the idea here, is having something new to do and being able to explore the compositional stuff that I grew up enjoying, that I did not have the training to understand. I may still not understand it, but I might be doing a little bit more of it than I used to. On that note, I hope you enjoy the slide rule. You can't download the paper, but you can download the PDF and print it, and then do this. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.